the American people. We'll also show you President Trump's most epic takedowns of the liberal mainstream media. After announcing his campaign, the president had faced an onslaught of historically negative media coverage. And on Monday, the president will continue to fight back against these attacks by unveiling what he's calling the most dishonest and corrupt media awards of the year. Now, before we get to all of that, it's important to show you just how abusively biased the anti-Trump media really is. And it starts with the media saying Donald Trump would never win, would never become the president. Take a look. Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican, which is surprising since I just assumed he was running as a joke. Do it. <laughs> do, do it. Look, look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country, which does not want you to be president, but which badly wants you to run. This man has got some uh, momentum, and uh, we better be ready for the fact that he might be leading the Republican ticket next. <laughs> I know you don't believe that, but I want to go on. <laughs> Sorry to laugh. Which Republican candidate has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> Mr. Trump, to answer your call for political honesty, I just want to say you're not going to be president, all right? <laughs> It's been fun. President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump. At least I will go down as a president. And then on election night after Trump's study victory, it was like a funeral for the mainstream media. You may remember some of this. America is crying tonight. I'm not sure how much of America, but a very, very significant portion, and I mean literally crying. Yeah. This is a sadness. It is a, a mourning moment for, for those people, uh, and it is, it is a moment filled with fear, fear, filled with fear. Our country is about to face some serious crises, and so... I mean, buckle up. Your country needs you. It's a pretty extraordinary thing to say. Uh, if you have a son in the Marine Corps and that you don't trust the commander-in-chief. The people in the military defend the Constitution. This was a white lash. This was a white lash against a changing country. It was a white lash against a black president in part. And since the election, the media has done everything possible to try and damage President Trump by pushing, of course, the Trump, Russia, Russia, Russia collusion narrative, despite no evidence so whatsoever at this point. Look at this nonstop shameful coverage. I think this is a potentially more dangerous situation than Watergate, and we're at a very dangerous moment. And that's because we are looking at the possibility that the president of the United States and those around him during an election campaign colluded with a hostile foreign power to undermine the basis of our democracy. Donald Trump is afraid. A political hurricane is out there at sea for him. We'll call it Hurricane Vladimir, if you will, the whole <laughs> Russian thing. This is evidence of willingness to commit collusion. There's outright treason. I mean, there is no question uh, that what he is doing is giving aid and comfort to the enemy. Specifically, Willie, I think what it means is that a federal judge found that people in Trump's organization were colluding with the Russians. But first, we want to start with this week in Russiagate. It is as if there are no shoes on the Trump human centipede that are not about Russia. Russia, Russia, Russia. This cloud about collusion with Russia will hang over him no matter where he stands. It certainly feels like we're in the opening stages of a devastating political chapter in American history. Evidence is mounting for the president's meddling in the Russia probe. Tom Friedman said the election hacking is at the caliber of a Pearl Harbor or a 9-11. Do you agree with that? I completely agree with that. Donald Trump now sits at the threshold of impeachment. I personally think it's over. I don't think there's anything that can be done that can stop this at this point. Cacophony, this gushing of lies, problems, questions, chaos that will stop this presidency in its tracks. You told the Washington Post last week that, quote, there's a smell of treason in the air when it comes to this investigation. A lot of people are afraid to use the T word, uh, treason, but in the end, that's what people are investigating. 
It does look like collusion. It does look like he's listening to Putin more than he is American intelligence. And frankly, I've never seen that before. Pretty unbelievable. Joining us now with reaction, former deputy assistant to the president, Fox News contributor Sebastian Gorka and Fox News contributor Herman Cain. You know, Dr. Gorka, they never expected this. They, they, they couldn't, they were shocked by it all. It was a funeral on November 8th, 2016. But the worst part is ever since there's been an effort to undo or to delegitimize this president and get him out of office any, by any means necessary. So it gets really serious. Yeah, I mean, not only did they not expect it, remember what the New York Times and the Huffington Post said, on the night of the election, Hillary has more than a 95% chance of winning. winning. Not, only, not only did they not expect it, they still can't believe it. For all the talk in this awful new book and across the media about mental competence in the White House. Do you know who needs mental help, Sean? All the people you just showed in your montage. The mainstream, <laughs> they, they need men mental health professionals to help them. I just had a journalist ask me today, based upon the, the Michael Wolff book, is it true that the president doesn't like anyone touching his toothbrush? Sean, <laughs> That's journalism. Journalism. North Korea has nuclear missiles. The president's defeated ISIS. China's on the march. I mean, and they want to talk about the president's toothbrush. This is a bad skit. It's insanity. It, it is a form of insanity. I'm not disagreeing with you. Herman Cain, you, you experienced all of this firsthand. You can speak from yes. experience how bad this is but it's still a lot worse for President Trump. It is. And that opening montage was fantastic. It shows that the jokes are on the jokesters and the lies are on the liberals. And it also indicates, as Mr. Gorka alluded to, that TDS, Trump Derangement Syndrome, is an addiction because results don't matter. They don't care about the results of 2017. It's all about Trump derangement syndrome. And if I can borrow a, a metaphor from Mike Huckabee, a, addicts that are drug addicts, some of them recover. But the media TDS addicts, they show no signs of recovery. They're in a hole and they keep digging and they can't get out. That's what this illustrates and it's sad for the country because we have depended so long on the media to give us the truth, and now we know that they cannot, they are incapable of being able to do that. You know, Dr. Gorka, as you look at, you know, then the year of really trying to get them out of office, that's what their goal has been. Yes. But if at a lower level it's to delegitimize, and the words, the adjectives that are used on an hourly basis on cable TV and in supposedly, you know, hard news journalistic centers, ABC, CBS, NBC is the worst. And, you know, Washington Post, New York Times that they use to describe the president. Are they hurting the office? They're hurting the whole country, Sean. This is the duly elected president of the most powerful nation in the world, and they don't recognize that he is the president. They use the kinds of language we've never, ever seen before. Not with Nixon, not with Reagan. They are doing things that are utterly outrageous for a blogger to do on mainstream cable television. But, Sean, can I tell you the good news? The good news is very yes, simple. Fox, you, your colleagues are crushing it with viewers like three, four million people a night. Uh, Anderson Cooper cracks open a bottle of champagne if 600,000 people watch him. They are becoming irrelevant. <laughs> I'm an American citizen now, and I'm proud to be. And you know what defines us? Common sense. When you get out of the bubble, they couldn't care less about Michael Wolf. They couldn't care less about Don Lemon. They want to see their paycheck in February be bigger than it was in January. They want to see ISIS crushed. So the American people see through, through the lies and they tune into your show. And that's great news. What do you make, Herman, of the, what I call the, this is the year of the boomerang? In other words, now we know that the Clinton Foundation is and has been for months investigated. 
uh, which yes. it should be. Now we know they've reopened an investigation into the email server scandal. Then we know that Comey and Peter Strzok literally rigged that investigation months before, writing an exoneration letter before an investigation. Um, all of these things now, and, and Trump-Russia collusion dying out, it seems that th there's been a, a dramatic turn of events that the media never expected. Did they ever admit at some point they were wrong about Trump and Russia? Do they look at Hillary Clinton f funding a dossier full of lies, Russian propaganda, lies, and salacious material, and say that could be collusion? Was it used for a FISA warrant? I mean, to me, these, this is all flipped on them. They will never admit it. Now, remember, the case on Hillary Clinton was closed during the Obama administration. It has now been reopened under the Trump administration. And even though Jeff Sessions gets a lot of criticism, I happen to believe, based upon all of the reports and the information we know, and based upon the outrage of Congress, I happen to believe, based upon that alone, Hillary is going down. Secondly, it is clear that the liberals and the Democrats have only one strategy. And it was used decades ago. If you keep telling a lie often enough, over and over and over, sooner or later, some people are going to believe it. The thing is, most of the people that are already believing a lie are already believing a lie. They aren't going to convert new people who are conservative voices out there. Even though we are outnumbered, Sean, I truly believe we are saving some of the savable. All right. Thank you both for being with us. We really appreciate it. A lot more to get to on this busy news night. We're going to give you an opportunity to weigh in. Who do you think is more guilty? What network is most guilty of providing fake news? What anchor? What newspaper? Coming up as we continue the special edition of Hannity, we will pick the worst of the worst in fake news media. Stay with us. Live from America's News Headquarters, I'm Trace Gallagher. Much of the East Coast from the Mid-Atlantic to New England in a deep freeze today as residents recover from Thursday's snowstorm. 10 to 12 inches falling in many areas, some places getting as much as 18 inches. Powerful winds also slamming parts of the East Coast, canceling hundreds of flights. Coastal Massachusetts also getting hit with high water, some communities dealing with historic levels of flooding. Meantime, on Wall Street, the markets are still red hot. All three major indices setting new records, which, of course, will help many IRAs and 401ks. The Dow Jones Industrial is closing more than 220 points higher to end the week well above 25,000. The NASDAQ Composite gaining another 58 points today. And the S&P 500 gained more than 19 points to close at its fourth straight record high for the new year. I'm Trace Gallagher. Now back to Hannity. Welcome back to the special edition of Hannity. All right, since President Trump took office last January, there's been no shortage of negative, nasty, downright biased coverage from the mainstream media and their favorite anchors. Tonight, we're going to show you some of the very worst offenders, and we start with fake news Jake Tapper over at CNN Fake News. Watch this. It may be difficult for some of you at home to wrap your minds around a U.S. president who makes statements like this about the use of nuclear weapons, which would, of course, murder millions of people. None of this normal, none of this acceptable, none of this, frankly, stable behavior. Your behavior is causing great concern among the majority of the American people. Every single one of the president's wounds is self-inflicted. Every single one of them. Um, so I don't really understand the propensity for self-pity at a time like this. If you are a, a hungry child in Appalachia or the inner city, if you are an unemployed worker in a hollow shell of a steel town, that's not a president who seemed rather focused on your particular needs and wants. The people around President Trump who are enabling this nonsense, the ones who know better, you have to ask yourselves this question. Are you really serving the president? Are you really serving the American people? Yeah, of course, he prefers presidents like Clinton and Obama. You know, they try to bribe murdering dictators. And by the way, Jake Tapper is only one of the many Trump haters over at Fake News, CNN, including their so-called White House correspondent, Jim Acosta. Take a look at some of his worst moments. 
What we're witnessing right now is just this erosion of our freedoms in terms of covering the president of the United States. I think that there are moments when this president is, is just really sensitive to criticism and he lashes out in this fashion. That is just a, a strange and unpresidential thing to do, to be throwing rolls of paper towels at people. The last three news conferences, Wolf, all of the questions to the American news media have, have been handled by conservative press. And I, I think, Wolf, there's no other way to describe it, but but the fix is in. The Statue of Liberty Jim, has always Jim, been let me ask you a question. of hope to the world Jim, for people to say Jim, do you believe people to this country? Jim, and they're not always going to speak Jim, English, Stephen. Jim, they're not do you always believe, going to be highly skilled. They're not always Jim, going to be Jim, 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 I, I appreciate your speech. I think we mm -hmm. saw the president's true colors today, and, and I'm not sure they were red, white, and blue. Wow. Not to be outdone by CNN, you have Conspiracy TV, MSNBC. They've also been broadcasting a nonstop Trump hate fest over the past year. It's especially true of host Joy Reid, who never masks her hostility towards the president. Here's a few of her highlights. Well, it does light. seem that Donald Trump has the tools of authoritarianism down. He's got the dance of authoritarianism down to a science. Donald Trump has been publicly vulgar and venal his whole adult life. Look, this is an administration that at the same time they're jet setting around the country on luxury planes is also plotting to cut their own right. taxes by billions and billions of dollars. I don't think that he understands the human scale of misery. I don't think that he can connect with the sort of compassion that you normally have when you see a disaster like this. You have the religious right that has built itself on this idea of sort of moral superiority. They are four square behind a guy who thinks Second Corinthians is two Corinthians, who's had three wives, five babies with three baby mamas. What yes. is this about? And of course, we can't forget about cable news's most cringeworthy couple, of course, liberal Joe and Mika, whose biased and deranged coverage of President Trump, frankly, is unmatched by anybody. Take a look. You have somebody inside the White House that the New York Daily News says is mentally unfit, that people close to him say is mentally unfit, that people close to him during the campaign told me had early stages of dementia. You can say that's not okay to say. But, but it is okay reality. to say. We, when are we supposed to say this? After the first nuclear missile goes? He looked like a thug. He looked like a goon. You look at the handshake. Uh, you look with look. Look at this. Just what a thug! It's, but it's just what an embarrassment. Look, he's mauling him like an idiot. You can absolutely. There, uh, it's just what an embarrassment to the United Optics States. Optics matter. It is a terrible thing to question someone's patriotism, but you wonder what he cares about. They see no talent. They see absolutely nothing behind the eyes that they can work with. I this presidency is rotten all the way to the core and right to the top. You gotta stop pu putting Kellyanne on the air. It's politics porn. They seem mentally unfit to host a cable show. Here with Reaction, author of the bestseller, Let Trump Be Trump, the inside story of his rise to the presidency. Fox News contributor, David Bossie, conservative commentator, Monica Crowley, and The Hill's Joe Concha. Joe, you actually, you have the great distinct honor, privilege, and pleasure. You watch this daily. <laughs> It's now become every minute, tell me where I'm wrong here, mm -hmm. basically every minute of every day, Trump, 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 and they're all living in this bubble and trying to outdo each other. If one says, he's deranged, no, 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 he's super, super deranged, you're wrong, I'm right. The numbers support they only, you, Sean. It's like the, yeah. What's that? The, the numbers support you. A Pew Research just put out a study last last month, and it's an end-of-year analysis, and they found that President Trump received, and I hope you're sitting down at home, 5% positive coverage, which is fascinating when you look at the five big indicators that Trump was voted in on. Economy, doing well. Jobs, doing well. Caliphate, ISIS, nearly decimated. Immigration still has some work to do. Health care didn't work out. When you look at all those grades, he, they can't possibly come to 5%. Now, when you compare that to the previous president, he only received, in Obama, 20% negative coverage. Trump, 5% positive coverage. Obama, 20% negative. The numbers simply don't match up. And what I'd like to see, Sean, the economy gets little coverage. And I just don't want to see charts, and I don't want to hear about the numbers. The numbers are fine. That, that's great. I want to see reporters get out of New York and Washington, where they're doing all this pontificating, and actually talk to people in Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. And I want to see if the economic effects are real, because that's where he got voted in, and that's why he got voted in, and that's real journalism. And we're not seeing it being done because it's lazy and it doesn't fit the narrative. 
you know, Monica, it's, it's kind of, I, maybe I should be really happy because they all regurgitate each other. So it leaves it wide open for me. And <laughs> now we see that a lot of what we've talked about in the last year about the Clinton Foundation uh, and about the email server now coming to true. You were way ahead of your time, Sean, because you were actually reporting facts and, and the truth. Look, the elite mainstream media has always had a left-wing bias. We know that. But what's different this time in the Trump era is the level of intensity and activism we see on their part. And that is driven by a profound hatred for this president. They hate his style. They hate the way he talks, the way he moves. They hate his wealth. They hate his politics. And the most important thing that they despise, Sean, is the fact that Donald Trump is not one of them. He represents an existential threat to them, to the ruling class. And that's why they're pulling out all the stops in order to try to destroy him. Because if he's allowed to succeed, it's over for them. What they seem incapable of grasping, Sean, or, or maybe they don't want to, is that the constant pounding that we get from them on Donald Trump helps him. It helps him because he's getting it done on the economy. I just wrote a column today for The Hill about this, laying out all of the economic numbers and how he is getting this job done on the economy. All of this criticism, this constant barrage helps him because it creates a rallying effect around this president who is actually delivering greater prosperity for the American people. Dave Bossy, you know, you wrote a book, Let Trump Be Trump. You were there. I was there. Um, I never heard of a guy, Papadopoulos. You would think that he was the most prominent man on the campaign if you watch these cable channels. I don't know <laughs> if you knew him at all, but I did, I did not know him. And I think you guys saw me an awful lot on the campaign, probably more than you wanted. And then, you know, Michael <laughs> Wolf is writing a book, but he's saying, well, it may not be totally accurate. And I can speak for myself. Things in the book he wrote about me are not true. Yeah. And, it, it, you know. Sean, this is, a, this is just outrageous what Michael Wolf, this purveyor of National Enquirer on steroids, sensationalist book that, I, I, you know, it's not even a book. It's just a, a tabloid. It is, it is outrageous what he has gotten away with in being able to put this book together and put it out there for the American people. And this mainstream, you know, m mania, the, the, the media just all glomming on to the sensational side of this uh, inaccurate book. We put our book up against this side by side and we see the inaccuracies. And it is, we did, and, and Corey Lewandowski and I wrote this book and it was an insider's and you were point there. of view. And we were there and we look at just the excerpts because we just got the book today. But just in the excerpts, we find fa false information, facts, and lies throughout the book. So people cannot take this book. As, as the truth, and it is so dishonest, and it's just, it's a tragedy what this is doing to take us off the agenda of what this president has done for the American people over this last year. So, Joe, what do we expect this year? I, I, in my view, the media's never going to get better. They don't admit they're wrong. Hell's going to freeze over first. They, you know, Trump-Russia collusion starts. Like, I'll give you an example. You know, 60 hours ago, they were all saying nuclear war's coming. Then as soon as Steve Bannon is believed to have attacked the president, let's change on a time. Don't worry about nuclear warfare for the moment. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to palace intrigue. Yeah, the, the, the Michael Wolf book is, is gossip that's treated as gospel. I'm not saying the entire book is gossip, but Michael Wolf, to your point, has admitted that he has actually taken parts out of it and drawn his own conclusions. When he says that the president never met John Boehner, and then I do a search that takes about 15 seconds that shows that the president has tweeted about Boehner 23 times and actually golfed about him last year. When stories like that don't pan out, then what are we supposed to believe within this particular book? And it goes to a theme of 2017 basing stories on unnamed sources, which in many cases is gossip, political operatives pushing a false narrative, and the American people are getting it, Sean. Let me uh, cite one more poll yeah. from you from Politico. 46% of the American public, it's not Republicans, 46% of the American public believes that the media is fabricating stories about this administration. And the president knows that, and that's why he's holding this fake news awards show on Monday, because he knows that's an unpopular institution, which is as old as the city itself, you attack when they're unpopular. Popular. And that's why we put this tape and the show together tonight, Monica, because it's so important. And there's so much material. I could probably just run the tape and everyone would get the message. 
Yeah, I mean, look, Sean, they, they need to destroy this man because if he succeeds, it's over for them, as I said. So what they try to do is take any conservative or any Republican president and try to paint them as crazy, evil, or stupid. In Trump's case, they're trying to paint him as all three in order to try to make him uh, not worthy of this office and set the grounds for his removal. The fact that this man is still standing, given this constant barrage, is in itself a miracle. Yeah. David Bossi, we'll give you the last word. Does this continue all through his presidency? And I would argue that if the economy keeps growing and, there's, and he stays strong against radical Islam and protects the homeland, I don't think he'll have a hard time winning re-election. Well, I think the left is uh, going to work incredibly hard every day against him. I think they're going to continue this false narrative that he is all of these things that Monica was just talking about. Remember, they did these same things to Ronald Reagan. When Ronald Reagan became president, they said he's, he takes naps. He doesn't understand. He doesn't know. He, Not you know, this bad, though. He, he's, well, well, you know, they called him a cowboy. They called him crazy. But th it was never this bad because of the... The, the national news today is different. The, you know, the, the, the Twitter and, and Facebook and all of the social media just continues the narrative from the left. And it is a, a, a unfair thing for this president. But he is head down doing the work that he got elected to do. And that is the most important thing. If you look at the economy, you look at the decimation of, of ISIS, you look at our national security, the hope, growth and opportunity that he has brought back to America. You mm -hmm. see these companies giving these bonuses uh, to their employees based on the tax bill. These are people who are going to get two tax cuts, not only the one from the federal government, right. but they're going to get a second check. That's what the mainstream it's media so will not talk about. It's so corrupt. They're so dishonest. It's so there's so much lying going on to the American people. All right, good insight, all three of you, and happy new year to you. All when we come back, the media has been caught red-handed, spreading fake news on major stories. We'll show you these major mistakes as this special edition of Hannity continues. Welcome back to the special edition of Hannity. So 2017 was a pretty rough year for the mainstream media in their rush, of course, to attack President Trump. Well, many fake news mistakes were made. Perhaps the worst example is from ABC News. Last year, Brian Ross, he was suspended from ABC for four weeks without pay for this false report claiming that during the campaign, candidate Trump told Lieutenant General Michael Flynn to reach out to Russia. Take a look. He's prepared to testify, we are told by a confidant, against President Trump, against members of the Trump family, and others in the White House. He is prepared to testify that President Trump, as a candidate, Donald Trump, ordered him, directed him to make contact with the Russians, which contradicts all that Donald Trump has said at this point. Now, of course, Ross was completely wrong, and hours later, he had to issue a correction. Watch this. A clarification tonight on something one of Flynn's confidants told us and we reported earlier today. He said the president had asked Flynn to contact Russia during the campaign. He's now clarifying that, saying, according to Flynn, candidate Trump asked him during the campaign to find ways to repair relations with Russia and other hotspots. And then after the election, the president-elect asked him to, and told him to contact Russia on issues, including working together to fight ISIS. Now, there's a huge difference between candidate Trump and President-elect Trump asking General Flynn to contact his soon-to-be Russian counterparts. But ABC News isn't the only outlet caught reporting false stories. Fake news, CNN, the Clinton News Network had several high-profile fake news stories like this report from early last month. Take a look. CNN has exclusive new details about a message sent in the final stretch of the 2016 campaign offering access to hacked WikiLeaks documents. This email on September 4th, 2016 was sent to Donald Trump, then candidate Donald Trump, Donald Trump Jr. and others in the Trump organization. The timeline is important here because on September 4th, that was after, months after the DNC was hacked and after their own uh, emails became leaked. And it was a month before Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta's emails uh, were leaked by WikiLeaks. And, of course, that story proved to be completely false as well. And don't forget that back in June, three CNN employees resigned over a story about a top Trump ally and a Russian investment bank. They had to retract that. And in December, one of the dishonest Washington Post reporters, David Weigel, he posted a picture from President Trump's rally showing a small crowd. The sarcastic caption reads, oh, packed to the rafters. 
However, this picture was highly deceptive and, of course, was taken before everyone had come in. Weigel had to apologize and then deleted the tweet. You know, spreading fake news wasn't the only major problem for the media in 2017. They also had some ridiculous examples of so-called reporting. Let's watch this. The president gets two scoops. You know, everyone else around the table gets one. Uh, and no word if there were sprinkles. At the dessert course, he gets two scoops of vanilla ice cream with his chocolate cream pie instead of the single scoop for everyone else. It would be like somebody pooping their pants and then people looking at it and saying, oh, that's modern art. Don't you understand? I am making a statement against Russian aggression. Mr. President, right. put this in the pickup. So where do you put that? You just right back. Put right it back in, in the bed. Maybe. In the cab. Wait, yeah. why? Cab or in the, yeah, what, where do you put it? What does that have to do with anything? So we'll show the video eventually. But we'll get he, the video. He hands it into the front window of the guy driving. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank bucket. you. It's better when you see it. But you have to just take it because if the president's putting it in the wrong place, you know, here's your bag of cement. Do you think you've had an earful of Donald Trump? Check out what's in the ear of a beagle in Britain named Chief. Brace yourself. All right, joining us now, former Secret Service agent Dan Bongino, Fox News contributor, former Congressman Jason Chaffetz, radio talk show host, Fox News contributor Tammy Bruce. Dan, I, I look at all of this, it's beyond superfluous on some level, but then it's outright evil on another level when you start trying to yeah. not only delegitimize, but get a, get a duly elected president thrown out of office. Yeah, you know what's comically ironic about this, Sean? You know, we're supposed to take the media, their elite advice on economics, on education policy and health care, and they can't even get journalism right. Like, you had one job. Just get the facts right. You know, there are two stories here, though, too, that I want to point out that show you this, this really perverse incentive with the media to get Trump out of office. Just recently, we saw this thing about new expose. George Papadopoulos started the whole investigation and the dossier and everything. But the same outlet that reported this just reported last summer that Carter Page did it. So did they not find it strange that they're refuting their own reporting? And then the, the classic example was the, the, the print outlets reporting on Trump being wiretapped. And then Trump tweets he's wiretapped. And in this very same outlets write stories that yeah. Trump's crazy for saying he was wiretapped. Yeah, hey, good job. You guys are great. They're really doing a great job. Congressman Chaffin said there's another side of this, and we've now seen this in the last 24 hours. Oh, let's see. The Clinton Foundation has been investigated now and being investigated for months. Oh, and Hillary Clinton's email server, that investigation is now ongoing. So there's big stories out here that they're not reporting on that could have severe consequences. And I will argue this may be bigger than Watergate by a long shot when it's all done. Thoughts? Well, it was June of 2015 that I sent the very first letter to the Obama administration highlighting the problems with Uranium One, a seven-page letter highlighting all the details. I followed it up in October. Do you think there's one person in the mainstream media who actually even covered that story? None. Absolutely none. And then to see one of the things that was most outrageous to me is when Time Magazine put Donald Trump Jr. on the cover saying caught red handed. It was absolutely totally misleading. And at the same time, this this mainstream media tries to point to to highlight the Obama administration as being scandal free. Everything from Fast and Furious to the IRS to the Hillary Clinton email scandal to Lois Lerner. Do you think any of them put them on the cover of Time magazine? No. And these were real yeah. scandals. Look at and Benghazi. People were killed and they didn't get on the cover of Time magazine. But they put Donald Trump Jr. on there. Yeah, Tammy, what's your take on it? Where does this go? Yeah, look, I, and don't, let's not forget with Brian Ross, a great uh, a review of that earlier, uh, Sean. Right after that report, the stock market went down 350 points. There are real-world repercussions when they lie or mislead. And, and let me just say, uh, you know, and this is why I, I kind of like the Michael Wolff book. It's a perfect example. Of, it's nothing new. It is what newspapers and so-called journalists have, have been doing at the New York Times, the Washington Post, when he, on page 10 of his prologue in this book, says, you know, some of this is not really true, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to let the reader decide and, and determine what it is that they, that they like or is true. Yeah, by the way, what a standard that is. Well, well, see, yeah. that's my point. That's exactly what the American media has been doing. Now, at least Wolf is admitting it. This is what the president has been dealing with for a year and a half. And it is to yeah. his, his uh, we have to give him all the credit 
finally we are now seeing it's not just about a difference in opinions or which road leads to Rome. It's about real misleading of Americans to where we now don't even trust who we should be able to trust, get information that we can believe in. Uh, you know, the CDC is having a meeting and a briefing on how Americans can survive nuclear war. Uh, I would like to see the media cover that. But at this point, if the standard is we're going to not even really know what the truth is, but if it, if it confirms our bias, we're going to put it out there and, and let you decide if you like it or not. That's what it's been uh, devolved into. Yeah, and the president so is the one we can only, right now, the president's the one we can trust at this stage. Dan, I, you know, I look at, for example, I showed last night Ronald Reagan, evil empire. Uh, the media thought he was going to start a nuclear war. Uh, George W. Bush, axis of evil. They thought he was going to start, you know, Armageddon. Uh, it's, if you don't try and bribe murdering dictators and appease them with billions of tax dollars like Clinton and Obama, anything you say that might sound a little tough to a two-bit rocket man dictator, you know, offends them, not the guy that's threatening to hit the button that's on his desk. It's the president they're offended at saying, you better not do it. We'll hit you back much harder. Yeah, I mean, who really gives a hoot what they think anymore, Sean? The foreign policy intelligentsia on the North Korean issue, the Palestinian issue, and the Russian issue have been telling us for years what to do. Diplomacy, buy them off, money. I mean, these various solutions they put out there in their 35-page uh, white papers. And you know what? They were wrong on pretty much every piece of it. No one even saw the Iranian protest coming. I have zero problem whatsoever with Trump using Twitter to kick this guy in the teeth, the short fat guy over in North Korea. Maybe finally he's waking up to the fact yeah. that our foreign policy may be unpredictable. Maybe it's the predictability that, in fact, has been hurting yeah. us for decades now. Congressman? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. I mean, look at what's going on domestically. Today, the New York Times, one of the headlines was 25,000 points you know, on the stock market. But when's the party going to be over? I mean, they can't even give them credit when something really good like the economy is going so well. And, yeah. and if I could just add, the Tell president me. has inherited such a disaster. It is remarkable what he's been able to accomplish despite the media trying to create this alternate reality and the establishment pushing it through. His wherewithal, the ability to see through that and to then defend this nation in this process is remarkable. And for everyone who voted for him, and as we move through this year, every single day, including this Wolf book and what the media is doing, reminds us about why we voted for Donald Trump and why he's the right so one well for this said. office right now. All right. Good to see you all. Happy New Year. When we come back on the special edition of Hannity, some of the president's most epic takedowns of the fake news media and... You get to weigh in on the fake news media. We'll tell you how. Straight ahead. Welcome back to the special edition of Hannity. President Trump has had some epic takedowns of the media this year. You may remember when he retweeted this mock video of him body slamming CNN. They had a fit, but it was funny. Watch. And the president also had no problem putting CNN grandstander Jim Acosta in his place. This is pretty epic. Watch. Since you're attacking us, can you give us a question? Since you're, no, Mr. President-elect, Mr. President-elect, since you are attacking no, our news not organization, you. Not can you. you give us a chance? Your you're, you are attacking our news organization. Your organization. Can you give us a chance to ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state, can, Mr. President-elect, can you state categorically, Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't you're rude. attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us a question? A I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you state categorically? You are fake news. All right, and the president never missed an opportunity to slam the fake news media at any of his rallies. Let's remind you of this. When the media lies to people, I will never, ever let them get away with it. I will do whatever I can that they don't get away with it. Media outlets like CNN and MSNBC are fake news. Fake news. I'm here this evening to cut through the fake news filter and to speak straight to the American people. Fake news. 
Fake, fake, fake news. These are sick people. You know the thing I don't understand? You would think, you would think they'd want to make our country great again. And I honestly believe they don't. If you want to discover the source of the division in our country, look no further than the fake news and the crooked media. Joining us now, former Arizona Republican Congressman J.D. Hayward, chairman of the American Conservative Union, Matt Schlapp. J.D., look, you, you've dealt with this in the course of your career. I mean, the, the reality is there's a lot of fake news. You know, it, there's no uh, discerning, objective news media like they claim that they are. This is an opinion program. I'm an advocacy journalist. We make no yeah, pretense we, on this program. I have an opinion. We're commentators, and that's fine. But the problem is uh, you have a situation where you've got guys, for example, the earlier segment, you, you had a um, uh, reel of Jake Tapper. You know Jake's first job in politics? It was press secretary for Democrat Congresswoman Marjorie Margolis Mesvinsky. Now, I think here's, here's a reform today. Uh, everyone at every one of the networks, including Fox, the resume should show up. What jobs have they had before? What have they done that have brought them into this situation? But you're right. It's been around for years. Our old buddy Jed Babin said the largest in-kind donation to the Democrat Party comes annually from the Washington Press Corps. Th they it's, are it's inherently leftist. They are inherently leftist, and uh, you just have to deal with it. But here's the big difference, guys. Donald Trump doesn't take it as a victim. He fights back. I can remember we would have folks in for the NRCC, and so many people in America would say to us as members of Congress, when are you going to take on the press? And we would say, look, we've got to get our work done. We can't get bogged down fighting them every day. The genius of this president is it has become so polarized, he is not afraid to call them out. You know, that is probably the one thing that I, I think, Matt, the media expects, that, or even the anti-Trump crowd, that they think that they can somehow pressure Donald Trump into changing and, and becoming the, the president and act the way they think a president should act. The one thing that I think distinguishes him and makes him so successful is him bypassing the media, tweeting out his opinions, tweaking people, and fighting back. And I think the people that support him find it extraordinarily refreshing. Yeah, I've been debating several prominent Never Trumpers all week uh, in response to this book. And the fact is the Trump agenda is conservative. It's fulfilling promises. But it's also a stylistic change. Uh, J.D.'s right. You're right, Sean. What Republicans tend to do is cower. They say we can't really go for everything that we, ca we promised during the campaign because, you know, it's unpopular or it's radioactive. So we'll only go for 40 or 50 percent. And then they go and do a negotiation. They get about 20 or 25 percent. And they come back to all of us and they say, look, we got 25 percent of what we want. Wasn't that pretty good? And we say, no, it's no good. We're losing our country to socialism. And part of it is because the media is relentlessly attacking these conservative values. And what the president has done is shown really everybody that the right way to handle this is not to cower and only ask for 25%. The right way to do things is push 